I'm Pastor George Borgard, and this is another Higher Things Video Short. Woke Wednesday takes on nuns, and not the Roman Catholic kind. That's the subject of today's Higher Things Video Short. Like, subscribe, get the app, ring the bell, donate. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell for notifications, get the app. You, you, the app is everywhere. iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, uh, Roku, Apple TV, and donate. Your tax deductible gift keeps higher things, a youth organization all about passing the faith to the next generation. That's what we're trying to do. We pass the faith, run farther, run faster than we do, and your kids, our kids, need this gospel. Give today. Woke Wednesday brings us with Erica Jacoby. She is the face that runs the place, known in higher things. She's the executive director, also a former high school teacher in Minnesota, which means she's woke literate, and it is our habit... No. ...to talk about no. woke things like nuns today. Hi, Erica. How you doing? I feel assaulted by bad humor right now. And by the way, your dog, who clearly knows your spiel by now, is waiting for his treat. He waited through your whole promo there, and now he, he was looking back at you going, where's my treat, man? Uh, there we, we go. Yeah, okay. So, Thanks uh, for the intro. I do so enjoy our chats. Who are the nuns? The nuns, and not, not, the, not the Roman Catholic kind, not the ones that wear the habits and the whole deal. Oh, boy, that's never going to get old, is it, with you? So, uh, yeah, let's talk about the nuns, spelled N-O-N-E-S. And when we talk about the nuns today, we are referring to Americans without a religious affiliation, which include nothing particular, agnostic, atheist. And they got the name nun by how they answer poll questions like, what is your religious tradition? So they say, none of the above, right? Make sense? Uh, and this is a trend, hi, Thor, uh, that started kind of emerging in the early, early 1990s. Um, at that time, uh, only 6% of Americans identified their religious affiliation as none. And uh, the number had not moved much since the 70s. But by the end of the 90s, 14% of the uh, public claimed no religious affiliation. And then the rate of religious change has accelerated further since then um, to the late 20, to, uh, to the late 2000s. Uh, 2010, um, it reached almost 20% by 2012. And then as of today, we're at about one quarter of Americans who claim no formal religious identity. Um, and this has actually become the largest religious group in the U.S. today, at twenty five percent, so it's a it's a it's a it's a big group of people. Hi, Erica. Thor says hello. Hi, Thor. Um, well, why do you why do you think that the nuns are growing as a community? Because I know in Christianity we will have none of that. Um, if I had to guess right now, I would say bad jokes from pastors. No, no, in all seriousness. Um, I can tell you why they're answering on, on religious polls. Pew Research is a really uh, one that's been polling for a long time. Um, and they are asking that question, why? And so um, one of the biggest reasons is that they question religious teachings um, and say that that's, that's a very important reason for their lack of affiliation. Another reason they're giving is opposition to the positions taken by churches on social and political issues. Um, and then, so those are the two top reasons. A little lesser than that is just a general dislike of religious organizations. Um, some just flat out say they just don't believe in God and, they, and some say they just don't consider religion relevant to them. So it has kind of no relevancy, relevancy to, their, to their daily life. Um, and I think an interesting uh, point to make at this point um, to talk about the nuns is to say that the, they're actually coming from mainline um, Protestants and Roman Catholics. So mainline religion uh, are actually jumping ship. So that's who's kind of losing those folks is um, the Roman Catholics is the biggest group where the nuns are dropping or, or becoming nuns from the religious, um, from, from that organization, from Roman Catholicism and other Protestants. So the, they're called mainline Christianity and mainliners are jumping ship and just completely 
becoming unaffiliated. And it's a trend that's increasing. And the, and the, the, the biggest concern I have working with youth, you and I work in a youth organization, is that um, the largest decline is happening in among young adults. And so um, that's kind of a large area of concern for us. Today, nearly four in 10 young adults at 39% age 18 to 29 are religiously unaffiliated. So that's a really big group, and it's the biggest kind of um, – subset of the population that is religiously unaffiliated. So some concern there. Um, so now this is my favorite part of our little chats on Wednesday. I get to ask you a question, Pastor Borkhart, instead of doing all the talking here, you and Thor. Um, hearing all of this about the nuns and sort of why they're uh, pulling away from Christianity and describing themselves as religiously unaffiliated, how can we help reach our friends and neighbors who are identifying themselves as nuns? How do we reach them with the gospel? Um, that's kind of tough. They, they, it sounds like they want nothing to sort of do with that. Can you help us out with it? Well, first of all, you can't have a vow of silence. So none of that. Oh, um, oh boy. Yeah. Uh, but the, but, but the, 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 well, I mean, I guess there's two, there's two ways of thinking about this. Um, the first being witness, um, the, the witness of your faith, the certainty. And the, I don't mean like, I'm going to take my faith and I'm going to shove it down your throat. What I mean by that is, is you live your faith. You love your faith. You do what's given to you to do. Um, you develop a relationship with them, and then there'll be an opening granted to to tell them why you have the hope that you have, why you believe what you believe. And at that point, you want to go full octane gospel, that Christ came, lived his life, died our death, and rose again. You want to assume anything. They don't know who Jesus is. They don't know what Christmas is. They don't know what Easter is. And so to say that, you know, Jesus lived his life for us and died our death, he deserved, he was born on Christmas. So I would be very, very slow um, very, very simple, but very, very crisp on that Christ died and rose again for us. And let the, let the sort of things fill in afterwards. I don't think you um, so much need to convince them that they're a sinner. You could do that. But um, I think first and foremost, we need to talk about um, Christ and what he did for us. And once we have what Christ and he did for us, then that would be fine. Um, and, and I'm not saying that there's no place for the law. There is. But when you're talking about a, a faith... There's my symbol. When you're talking about um, when you're talking about some the faith with someone who has no idea about the faith or the Ten Commandments or anything, starting at the very beginning of the book and and sort of paging through and like telling them that they're a bad person, it, I don't think is the way to go. I think you you zero in on everybody knows that because of natural law that they're that they're incomplete or or on or not perfect. And you can really, really run with the suffering and death of Jesus, what Jesus did for us, how he was born for us. He was born of a virgin. Um, and you can prove the resurrection, that, that the resurrection, his death is factual and his resurrection, the ripple effects of that are everywhere. So I think it's, it, this is a, a place for apologetics 101, mm -hmm. only the simple version. You know what I mean? Sort of starting, starting slow. Cause I, I know, um, in, in the high school where, where I taught, um, Church words you can't take for granted anymore. Church terms, like you mentioned, Christmas, Easter, um, what even goes on in a church is there are a lot of folks who just have never even stepped foot in a church. And I think that's really good advice. I think we, I think as time has gone on here, that more and more of us are very familiar with, I, I think, comfortable in saying, yeah, I know a lot of nuns, not, not, not the kind, the Roman Catholic kind that you were talking about. But hey, sister, soul, sister, soul, sister, go, sister. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Sister. This might be, this you I preach might be it, sister. reason why, why the nuns are growing and it might be you, dude. But um, no, I think, I think you make a really valid point is to kind of start, don't assume they know anything. And I think that one other point I would sort of tease out a little bit. We've talked about this before, but um, I mentioned young adults, um, high school age and college age. We know statistically that they are experiencing higher levels of anxiety, um, stress, uh, depression, and suicide rates are all going up. So we know, we know they need Jesus. Um, they sort of just don't know that they know that they don't know that they need Jesus. 
Can you talk a little bit about how that might be a little bit of an opening for the gospel? Well, you don't know what you don't know. You know what I mean? I, I think that, the, that it's not necessary that they'll be anti-Christian, um, which gives you an opportunity to, to tell them about Christ. Um, I, 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 I really think you just run with who Jesus is, what he did, and um, how he rose. The compelling arguments about how he rose which we might yeah. need to take take a, a simple apologetics course, but I mean how he rose, and 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 but it also is part of your life that it's your lived out life, and so it's not that hey you're a nun you don't know anything about Jesus well I'll have none of that and let me uh, uh, throw my habit on you and and tell you about how Jesus died and rose Zuri, uh for you uh, and and how great that is. I just think that you live your life, you develop a relationship with somebody and at the proper time in which the spirit gives you, there you have an opportunity. Hope that helps. Excellent. We need to talk about um, your sort of basic apologetics sometime. Um, we should, yep. Erica Jacoby is the executive director of Higher Things. She is also a former schools teacher, uh, a high school teacher, and um, a friend of Lama's, it appears. Erica, thank you very much. Hey, thanks for having me. Always. Um, so the gospel in your ears is what saves you. The gospel in other people's ears is what saves them. And so um, there's no magic trick here. It's the spirit's work. Stick to the word. Um, you don't have to be preached like Paul, says the hymn, uh, you, but you do um, simply need to point to him and what he did for you both in your life and um, in his word. I'm Pastor George Borkart. I don't know where Thor is. He's underneath the, the blanket. And this has been another Higher Things video short.